Horale Homs. Ah, this is me. I'm back. I'm the Techno Kid. And today we're going to be doing more of a discussion on a very crucial and important topic, which is Trojan horses. Trojan horse is basically a malware that is disguised to actually perform a specific function while in the background it performs another function. Now, the Trojan horse originates in the old Roman days when the Roman soldiers basically they they hid themselves inside a wooden Trojan horse and they would leave it out in the field and the enemies would take in that horse to actually examine it into their castle. Now, since the Roman soldiers were inside this Trojan horse, they would actually get out and then actually attack them. So it was actually a way of actually breaching the defenses of their enemies. So that's the very same thing that a Trojan horse can do in a system. Basically, it's disguised to look like something else once it has been run it actually executes a command within the background so the trojan horses they can actually um they can actually happen in a number of systems from linux windows mac os and a number of others that also includes those who are hidden which is solaris and those who don't know what solaris is that's the one that's commonly used for servers so basically there is no system that can actually run away from trojan horses and today i'm going to show you one of the biggest trojan generators that i've ever used unlike uh, most linux users they actually use the metasploit framework to generate payloads or in this case which are trojan horses and bind them to other applications but now for those who do not have the metasploit framework they can actually go ahead and use this application i'm going to show you and the name of this application is called the beast trojan and the beast trojan is basically the very same thing as the metasploit framework but it also but it happens on a graphical user's interface which makes it very easier to use so the beast trojan basically can create what we call stubs which are mini server applications and those server applications are the ones that are the ones that we actually refer to as the payload now the payload is the one that we are actually going to go ahead and bind onto another application so when that application is launched the stub will be executed within the background and the victim will not actually see this because it does not show anything once it has happened so basically after they launch it they are going the the server or rather the victim's pc is going to attempt to make a connection to our beast server which is where we actually created it so i'm gonna go ahead and show you an overview of how the beast trojan actually looks like and i'm gonna go ahead and generate a simple payload and i'm gonna try and go and scan it over at virustotal.com and i'm gonna scan and see whether it's going to be generated and see which of the antiviruses are unable to detect this trojan horse but now let's run into it onto these hands on Preview. all right let's run into this thing now i have uh, a quick favor to ask now if you are watching this and you haven't hit the subscribe button please go ahead and hit it if you do not know it is the red button written subscribe on it just hit it and that will keep me motivated to keep these educational videos coming all right now i do have to mention that i have changed my system um i got rid of melissa I'll miss her, that is my parrot OS. And now I got myself this new OS. This is the one I, I actually built myself. It looks really cool. Don't mind the wallpaper, I love Mortal Kombat. So I built this system um, out of the depreciated Cyborg Hawk Linux, which is a Linux distribution that was built for penetration testing, ethical hacking, digital forensics, and reverse engineering, and multiple tasks. So I've built this one basically from it and upgraded it to a much higher Ubuntu version. So to begin off, um, I have the the executable for the Beast um, for the Beast software right here that I've downloaded. Now I will put the link in my in my blog on the website. The link will be in the description. So this is basically it. Now do notice that it is an executable and do not be confused by the fact that I'm running a Linux OS but I'm able to run an executable. That is because I have the Wine software installed. Now if you're running a Linux software, I mean a Linux operating system, sorry. If you're having a Linux operating system and you want to 
run a windows executable like this one you need to have wine installed now wine basically allows you to run exe files on a linux os so this is beast i'm gonna go ahead and launch beast now beast looks very much normal it has a a graph there that basically shows the network uh, statistics between uh, my system and the victim's system now these are the the types of things you can actually do to the system just like meta spread framework allows you to take things such as screenshots and ect with the victim's pc basically with beast you can do these kind of stuff on the management side you can basically copy files download files between you and the system that you have managed to access you can edit its, its registry data and you can actually stream its screen meaning that you can see what the victim is doing on the screen in real time you can make use of the victim's webcam you can copy their apps delete uninstall those kind of stuff you can terminate uh, running processes meaning that you can close programs that they are running you can go ahead and see what they've copied on the clipboard and actually modify what is on the clipboard you can go ahead and um, check out the browser passwords the system passwords and those kind of stuff you can hide the windows that are running you can power off and those kind of stuff this is basically the lame kind of stuff you can do then there's the lamest ones which you use to torture the victim such as hiding the desktop icons hiding the system tray hiding the start button disabling the system tray opening the cd drive now this is not going to be useful for the latest operating systems but this is very much what you can do you can lock in the mouse to make sure that it can't move on the victim's os you can hide the clock you can swap buttons meaning the keys that you actually type on your keyboard they'll actually show up on your victim's os and you can do some other fun stuff such as locking the cd drive hiding the mouse cursor and you can open um you can open websites and change their wallpaper and that's very much it and you can actually install a keylogger as well you can perform scanners to find other hosts that the victim is associated with within their network you can also also chat with the with the victim with the victim pc and you can just like send messages and there'll be a section for them to actually answer and you can run apps as well and there's a keylogger that you can install and that's very much it now if you go on the about section you can get the information about the creator of the beast of the beast uh, remote access trojan tool now this uh, uh, software was created by tatai which i don't believe is the real name of the first of this person but anyways i really appreciate you tatai if you're watching and wherever you are we really appreciate the software so to build um the trojan or rather the payload we go ahead to build and under the basic here is the name of the process thread that we want it to be so if they open a software such as task manager it will actually show up as this so I'll, you may leave it as a svc host and then the password is when you want to connect to the beast server you you know this part that password that you actually enter here so you can actually have a credential between you and the beast server that you have uh, gotten into now mostly here you'd want to inject it otherwise if you do not then the soft the beast server can be stopped by the person who's running that system so if they see that there's a trojan running they are able to actually terminate that thread you can perform a reverse connection i prefer reverse connections because they are able to sort of trick the firewall a bit okay so it can reside in the system in this case i'm just trying to make it a bit more complicated if it was to infect someone okay then along the notifications okay then how the notification is more of how would you receive the information once the person has been infected by the the payload so you can go ahead and maybe like have an email sent to you of some sort or you can have a message show up on your on your system okay so you can get your ip address and a pop-up will show up on your side 
and then you can by default your payload will automatically start when the system has been rebooted or immediately as it turns on it will automatically start and then here we have the AV kill which means it can be a your payload is able to um, terminate antiviruses meaning if it finds the an, an antivirus running it will be able to actually stop the antivirus basically it will terminate it and then you can say kill the antivirus on start the moment the executable starts or rather the moment you open the payload it can immediately kill the antivirus to stop it from running now it's obviously would want it to check every five seconds just in case the antivirus starts again now if you're infecting a windows xp system you can go ahead and click that so it can actually disable the windows xp firewall and then we have miscellaneous kind of stuff the kind of things that you wanted to actually show so here we have the enable keylogger meaning that the moment it goes into the system and infects the system it will have a keylogger running basically listening for keystrokes and actually saving it in this file so the moment you connect to the system you can go ahead and under the managers with the files you can actually download the keylogger file and view the key logs that we've done now what makes this thing a trojan horse is the fact that you can add a fake error message meaning the open the moment the app starts you can have it uh show a certain message that will make it to look legitimate so for instance if there's an error if let's just say we we disguised the payload to look like an installation file so it will actually show an information screen and that information screen can say something like um, installation finished uh, installation finished please reboot for instance okay now if it has something like that the moment it infects it will actually show a pop-up like that one something like that okay so that's very much how beast works out so just like this one it will look like this it looks pretty normal isn't it and it's very much neat it, it looks like you no know, it looks very much real and then you can go ahead and also um give the payload a, a an icon so it looks a, a little more convincing then once you're done you can go ahead and save the server and then i'm sure you can see the file that was just created now which is the server.exe file right there so after cancelling this is the this is the file okay so i'm gonna go ahead and attempt to scan the file on virus total okay so i believe that um this file should be it should be flagged by very much all antiviruses i would be disappointed in myself if it does not get flagged by any other antivirus but it's i'm sure you saw that the as i was generating i did not per add any any sort of encoder or any obfuscation it's a very plain payload that i just created so it should be flagged i hope if not goodness goodness me so i'm gonna go ahead and confirm the upload and once it has confirmed the upload it should begin scanning and show me the results fingers crossed and if you can see that it has been detected by very much all of them so yeah that is that is the trojan beast yes it did get uh it, it, it was um flagged but this is just going to be info for another time but if I had this payload, I would basically add some obfuscation into this payload. And then once I've obfuscated the hexadecimal, um, the hexadecimal strings inside it, I would then add an encoder on top of it as well. And then hopefully it will be undetectable from there. But very much this is how it looks. So if I had performed the the relevant obfuscations to this thing and made it undetectable and run it on the target system 
it shouldn't exactly be caught so the moment it's run on the target system i'll actually see an ip address showing here after double clicking it it will connect to the target system and then i can perform these actions that i have shown you now this is the trojan beast and this is how it basically works so if you want to give it a try the link should be in the description now please do remember to like subscribe and always support the techno kid stay smart stay strong peace